here today. Um, I really see Brother Marcus back there. I don't really recognize Brother Marcus because he's been a faithful attender at our church while he's been in the middle. Well, he's still in the military, but he's getting his ready to be relocated to Mercer. Or Pope So we are going to be missing you for a year. A year. But in my last conversation with our friend, he's wanting to eventually relocate back to this area. Is that still true, sir? Yeah. All right. All right. So,
after all we went through last week. That's the least I could do. Wait, how did we get back here? Oh, we were probably shipped in Amazon boxes. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the last time we were in here? Yeah. That was when I was stuck in training to be a missionary. Since I've been in the Amazon, since I've been in the Amazon, I've met lots of these friends, but a lot of people.
throughout the, the incredible race, um, but we had one child receive Jesus in their heart, and so, you know, right there, that is worth it all. Um, and, you know, we planted the seeds, and Nancy told me, she said it takes maybe about 14 times for um, people to hear the gospel.
come around, but that Jesus came to bring us all back into his family and how much we all need to be brought back into his forever family together. And now I'm going to pretend I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank and the other thing that we also talked about was that um, God loves each of us the same. He doesn't love waiting more than me or fancy more than me. He loves us all the same. Um, there are a few people that I want to thank. So when I announce your position or name, if you'll just stand so we can recognize you. Um, the techie team up top who did our sound, Kevin and Sandy,
Luke chapter 9, in the story of the feeding of the 5,000, uh, the disciples came to Jesus and told Jesus to send the crowd away to get food, but Jesus replied, you give them something to eat. And uh, at 5 and 2, we, we can't perform any miracles to feed 5,000, but we can work with you uh, and our, our local uh, food lions and, and Walmart and with generous donations from our community to act as a, a distribution. Um, I want to thank you again for the donation, uh, but I also want to keep requesting your help. Um, we rely on a lot of volunteers. Um, if, if you uh, have the time, and, and uh, please uh, feel free to come and volunteer. Um, so we need volunteers, um, and, and there always be something that needs fixing. Uh, our, our truck uh, that we use to pick up from the stores uh, broke down this week. Uh, and, uh, and then a freezer had to be fixed, so there's always uh, something uh, going on. Um, and uh, you know, if, if you're able, we encourage people to uh, become what we call monthly sustainers uh, that give you know, either through our Facebook page or our um, our web page uh, if you have a PayPal account. But uh, just appreciate everything uh, that you're providing, and we also need your prayers. Um, Thank you again for your donation. God bless you. Thank you. Let's reframe the art. God created everything. 
know they will be back to share with us in our song of invitation. So any of our children ages three through grade five are welcome to go to the station and, and, uh, <coughs>
And on this leg of the race, we stopped at the Tower of Babel and we checked out the important and the loving roadblock, we'll say, that God provided there at that uh, tower. The name is called Babel because it's there that the Lord confused the languages or the language of all the earth. And it's from there that the Lord dispersed people under the face of all the earth. Therefore, we have different languages, different cultures, customs. We saw one night, and we went and fast-forwarded into the New Testament, and we read how if God loved, so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 1 John 4.11 we learn that because God does love all peoples of all nations, we ought to treat others with that same love and respect, not prejudice and not judgment. So no matter where we live, no matter what shade of skin we have, or what language we speak, we are all part of the same family, the same race, the human race and all part of the same family, all the way back to Adam and Eve. But now God is making a fresh call. He's calling people from every tribe and nation through His Son, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And He wants us, you and me, who have received His salvation, to share that good news that only Jesus saved. He wants us to do it in kindness, in love, with our neighbors that are near or away. And then it brings me to what I want to focus the rest of the message on. We shared the gospel that yes, we've all sinned. We've all messed up. We've all fallen short. But there is one, and it's God in the flesh who came to pay the price for our sin, which was death. You see, the consequences of our, death, of, of our sin is death. But God gives us freely His gift. The gift of eternal life by faith in His Son. We also looked at this incredible grace. And we see this grace extended through the most terrible time, or the beginning of the most terrible time that people will experience on this earth. We got a glimpse of heaven. We read that in Revelation 7. We discovered the need now to yield our lives to our Creator. We're created by the same God. We're all created by the God of the Scriptures. This living, eternal God. And He's reaching out to you and me today. He's reaching out through you and me who claim to know the Lord to all nations, to all tribes, and to all peoples with His love through His Son. God provides only one way to be saved. There's not two and there's not three. There's not many ways that you and I can come to God. He loved us enough to send us His Son that whosoever believes in His Son Jesus would not experience eternal death, but experience what? Eternal life. God provides just one way for you and I to be saved. Many want to try to create other ways or declare other ways or convince us of other ways. But there's only one way. There's only one mediator between God and man. As Paul said to Timothy, but it's, it's the man Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, we're saved through His death and thank God through the resurrection that He displayed from the dead. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 14, the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Jesus said of Himself. And He's either the Lord of all, He's the greatest, the craziest person that ever lived for Him to declare this statement. He's either Lord or He's limited. One or the other. I believe He's Lord. I believe He's Lord because He rose up from the dead. But Jesus said this in John 14, 6. I am the way. I am the the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. But you know, the invitation again is universal. 
And as Paul declared from the same Spirit of God that raised up Jesus from the dead and that has raised us up and really given life to our mortal bodies and given us eternal life, says this, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So at any time the Lord Jesus is going to appear in the clouds as the Bible says, He could appear at any time. He could appear in just this next second. Come Lord Jesus. Amen. But he could, he could appear and he will appear at that appointed time in the clouds and he'll snatch the believing at that time away to be, at the, to be with him in heaven. We call that rapture. And I get that from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Excuse me, not chapter uh, 1, verses 9 and 10. Um, it is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse, of it, I guess, I think it's people time to begin with verse 13. Christ, 
if you will turn from trusting in yourself or anyone or anything else to try to give you what only Jesus can give you, and that's peace in your heart, and love in your heart, and a hope that will last beyond the grave. If you're looking anywhere else to get you to God, then today I can tell you there's one way, and there's only one way. Jesus Christ, receive Him as your Savior. Live for Him. As He has saved you, let His love fill you that you may serve Him all of your days as Lord. You will be saved in Jesus from the wrath of God to come. That's good news. So after the church, after the church has been caught up, this terrible tribulation comes. The time will be so terrible that the Bible says that one-fourth of the earth's population will be destroyed. How? By war, by famine, by pestilence, hunger, starvation. It'll be a time so terrible that the Bible calls it the period of death and hell. Remember, when we go to Revelation 7, this is just the beginning of that terrible tribulation period. There's to be a time of so much horror and unspeakable fright that, can only, that it can only be called the Great Tribulation. And when it comes, there will be no end to the destruction and the loss of life until, until the Lord, what does He do? He returns to this earth with the saints to put an end to all of the sin and the evil and He will judge the whole world. And then after that, He will usher in the new heavens and the new earth. His people those who have received the blood of Jesus for the sacrifice of their sins, He'll establish a new heaven and earth for His church for all eternity. So the important question is this. Is there any hope? Is there any hope today for you? Is there any hope for anybody today? Is there any way that people who are living at that time as well as today, but in that time in particular, that they can be saved? And the answer is yes. There will be a numberless multitude of believers saved during that period or that beginning of those years of tribulation. In Revelation, the Bible is very clear, and I want us to recognize something in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6. I'd like you to turn with me to that verse of Scripture if you can. Revelation chapter 5, or look it up on your smartphone, or whatever you can get. Revelation chapter 5, beginning with verse 6. The Bible is clear as to who people must turn to in order to be saved now and then in the tribulation. Revelation 5 and verse 6. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb. Who's the lamb? Jesus, as though it had been, what, slain, speaking, referring back to his crucifixion, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, and out into, and sent out into all the earth. Then he came and he took the scroll. You know what the scroll is? I've heard somebody turn it as the, the title deed to the earth. The rightful document that proves he owns it. And he takes this scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne, God the Father. And then verses, uh, chapter 7, verse 9, the numberless multitude, who are they? They're people from everywhere. They're people from all nations. Not just some, not even most nations, but there's going to be somebody there from every single nation. From all tribes. There's not going to be a tribe from any place on earth that's left out. All tribes will have some people within them who will be saved in that period of time. From all people, the scripture says. There will not be a people who will not have some saved from their number. From all tongues or all languages. So during this tribulation time, there will be people who will turn to Christ by the millions. Some of you have turned it. That will be the greatest revival time in all of history. But let me say this. Don't risk waiting until then. Don't risk that. Don't put it off. 
The Bible makes it very clear. Don't harm your heart to the Spirit of God if He's calling you to turn to Jesus now. Turn to Him now. Because in that day, if you claim to, if you come to know Christ, it's going to be, uh, as a matter of fact, as terrible as the sorrows and the woes will be during that period of time. It's going to be ten times harder, twenty times harder to come to know Jesus in that time period of time than it is right now. So you think things are bad now. You wait until the church collective has been called up with Jesus and they're no longer on the earth. The Spirit of God who is the Spirit of the church has been lifted. And then there's those 144,000 witnesses of the Jews that have been sealed to go out and preach the gospel. But friend, don't take that risk. Don't take that chance. Many will not trust in Jesus Christ. Many don't today. But can you imagine a time when it could be instant death if you were to say, I want to be a Christian. Or persecute, torture in the hand of <coughs> these anti-Christian uh, leaders of that time. The devil. But just imagine, if you will, a great multitude. No man can number the multitude. There's going to be many people. Teeming millions standing before the throne of God. Singing to God. And singing to Jesus. Singing to the Lamb. Look, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals. For Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood. But whose blood? By Thy blood. The blood of Jesus. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. That's right there in Revelation 5, 9. Now back to Revelation 7, verses 9 and 10. I'll finish there. There's this glorious position of this numberless multitude. Who are they? They're those who, who, who uh, were redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And what are they doing in verse 9? They stand before God. They're standing before, before the throne of God and before the Lamb and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what, I'm reading some horrible stuff going on in the name of trying to educate children. Did you happen to see last night? Brother Chris and I were talking about this morning. I saw it. Drag queen story time for children. Now, listen. God loves those people. God loves every single person that He's because He created them. They may not be serving Him, but you know what? Sin is on the increase because people are more and more about themselves and not about serving God. They want to do their own thing without accountability to somebody. So you can easily convince yourself over a period of time to believe this, that you can delude yourself and deceive yourself to the point that I don't have to answer to anybody. Therefore, I can do whatever I want to do. You see the lack of conscience or you see the dead conscience or the conscience that has become deadened because of sin and selfishness? And you see what that leads to? Something like that that we saw on television just, just last night. But these have recognized that they will account to their Creator. You and I are all going to have to account to our Creator. He's worthy of that because He created. He has the right to be worshipped, to be loved. And so he this multitude this, had the most glorious of privileges face to face not in fear not in horror but in joy and in celebration they have this privilege to be honored with the very presence of God and of Christ to know God and to know Christ in all their fullness and deed isn't that wonderful and then also you see too that they are clothed with what white robes it means they've been made righteous the only way you can be made right with God is by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. But they've been made pure. They've been freed from all of the blemishes of their sin and from all the corruption of the world. All done, paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ who is the righteous one. It means they've been perfected. They've been completed in Christ. And they stand before God perfected. You see that white robe of righteousness 
It's a sign of the righteousness through Christ that any of us can have. It's a sign of being made free from this, this defilement and this smut of sin through Jesus Christ. It's a sign of the victory over sin and death and the grave and the judgment to come on the world through Christ. It's a sign of being perfected forever through Jesus Christ. It's a sign, these white robes, it's a symbol of the glorious privilege of living forever in the presence of God through Jesus Christ. You see, none of that can happen apart from what Christ has done for His creation. And what, did you notice all something else what they're doing? They're holding palm branches. They're waving them in their hand. They're not going to be shouting, crucify Him, crucify Him. By him, like the first crowd the first day, when he came for the first time. They're going to be singing praises to the Lord. What do those palm branches mean? It's a time of celebration. It's a time of victory. It's a time of triumph. It's a time of deliverance. It's a time of joy. And so the redeemed before God celebrate their triumph over the terrible tribulation and the sin and the death and the hell corruption of this world. They celebrate the victory they, that they have in Jesus Christ. They celebrate their deliverance in Christ. They celebrate their joy in Jesus. And then notice also one other thing. They shout praises for their salvation. They shout, shout praises to God. Now note what it is that they shout. Do you see this in verse 10? Salvation to our God which sits on the throne. I love this. Talk about Jesus. And unto the Lamb. If you miss Jesus, you have missed life. If you miss Jesus, you miss Him, you miss heaven. If you miss Jesus, you miss standing in the presence of God, clean, pure, whole. What are they praising God? What do you mean they're praising God for salvation? They praise God because God has saved them. God has delivered them through the great trials upon this earth because God has given them the power to believe and to endure to the very end. That's what it'll do for you today if you're believing in Christ. They're praising God because He's accepted them in Christ. Because God has given them this glorious privilege of His presence. Uh, we really are made, as we sang in the song, We're One Blood. We're made to worship. That's what we're made to do. We're, we're made to worship something or somebody. You're worshiping something or somebody today. I don't know if it's Jesus. But when you come before Jesus and you recognize that He's paid the price for you and He's paid the, the He's made the, the situation for you to where you can come into the presence of God through the blood of His own body. Friend, there's not going to be anything else that you'll want to give your life to. There's nothing... There's nothing more worthy than that. To be connected with our Creator and our Savior. Don't say we're, we're made to worship. We're made to what? We're made to love. That's through the blood of Jesus Christ. The cross of Jesus Christ. Let me close with this, and our kids are going to be coming back in just a second. William Barclay has a statement about this point of these believers coming through the earth at that point when the church is gone. The believing are gone and then, then, then there's this great testing of those who will come and admit uh, that they need the blood of Jesus Christ in this terrible uh, terrible times, the worst of times on the earth. But William Barclay makes this statement about these believers who have come in this time. And I think his words should stir you and I to surrender our heart right now and our life to Jesus as Savior and Lord, so that we can, and so that you and I will, can, and will endure any trials, any temptation, no matter how severe it is. Listen to what he said. God is the great Savior, the great rescuer, the great deliverer of His people, and the deliverance which God gives is the greatest deliverance of all. Listen. For it is not the deliverance of escape. It is the deliverance of conquest. It is not the deliverance which saves a man from trouble. It is the deliverance which brings a man triumphantly through trouble. 
It does not make life easy, but it certainly makes life great. It's not a part of the Christian hope to look for a life in which a man is saved from all trouble and distress. The Christian hope is that a man in Christ can endure any kind of trouble and distress and remain upright all through them and come out to glory on the other side. Is that, is that your hope? Is that what your hope is based on today? God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let me just mention this. God's grace is extended to us all today. Once again, incredible grace. His salvation from sin and the gift of an abundant and everlasting life. Have you received that gift? Would you pray with me? God, you are, and you have shown us that you are the creator of all And that you are the creator of every one of us. And you and you alone invite us to come before you, humbly, admitting to you, Lord, and to the Lamb that our sin separates us from you. And you've invited us to surrender our past, our present, and our future to you. And to enter into a permanent relationship of grace and love with Jesus, your Son, the Lamb as our Savior and the Lord of our life. For you alone are worthy. Thou art worthy. You are worthy of all of our worship. You are worthy of all of our love. You are worthy of all of our life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will you be saved from your sin? Will you be saved from the wrath of God? Turn from your sin. Receive the gift of God's saving grace. Live for Christ until He comes again. So now the children, the youth, and the leaders of BBS will come to sing about God's incredible grace. And this is an opportunity for you to publicly, to publicly confess your faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord. I'll be standing down here up front to the side. I'll be available to pray with you to uh, welcome anyone uh, that God is leading to receive Christ into your heart today. We want to share about this incredible grace. Would you stand with the congregation as these children, youth, and leaders sing? Let these words become real to you and respond to Christ as your Savior and Lord this morning before it's i